All right. Next up, I'm going to show off. I'm going to go actually go back to Framer um, and show off how we can do an even deeper integration. Um, so if you joined us a few, I believe, live streams ago, uh, our co-founder, uh, Guido, he, he went over our launch of the Framer code component integration, where you can have even deeper control of Rives into Framer sites. Um, as you saw earlier, you kind of just drag and drop the share link in, and it just works as needed. Um, sometimes, especially if you need you know, the help of a runtime, you want to get more granular control into, um, into using the state machines or even positioning the layout of your Rive on the canvas um, and even playback controls. And so uh, usually with you'd have to use runtime code for that custom runtime code. But thankfully, uh, we have a very special integration, um, again, that Guido showed off. Uh, so you can check that out. He, he goes over um, a really neat demo, I think, using some icon uh, interactive icons in a framer site um, with this integration. But I'm going to just re-show it again. Um, so imagine I have this framer page. Maybe I'm creating a design system site, and I want to show off a page that's this switch component. Um, some of you might be familiar with this switch. It's uh, one that JC built here. It's like this cool little beach switch. Um, and so it's got this listener. That, uh, with a hitbox, and then it has this is pressed input here that uh, toggles on and off. And so I want to show that here, but I also want to be able to toggle that switch outside of the Rive canvas, so not using listeners. Um, and so again, normally to do anything outside of the Rive canvas that uh, controls Rive, you'd have to use runtime code for that. But uh, in this case, uh, you can do it pretty easily with Framer. So the first thing I'm going to do is generate our share link with that state machine. And then if you scroll down here, you'll see Framer code. Uh, you just go ahead and copy this. You really don't have to know what all of this means. It's essentially um, some React code that's using our React runtime under the hood um, that knows how to display and get metadata from, from this Rive. So I copy that code, and I'm going back to my Framer page. And I'm going to go into my Assets tab here, into the Code section. And I'm going to create a new code component. So I'm just going to call this uh, Rive Switch Component. And you'll see here that it throws up some default code. Um, you can just replace this with that code snippet that we got from the Rive Editor. Again, you don't really have to know what any of this means. It's just drag and drop in code. Um, kind of like the days from like Neopets or MySpace or something. <laughs> um, and here you'll see uh, you can interact with that Rive using listeners. Um, but yeah, we created a code component using, using that. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to drag over that code component that we just created. And you can um, reposition this as needed. And now you may notice um, if uh, you've used Framer and share links with Rive. Uh, you may notice this new section. Um, this is basically uh, the, the property section that gives you a lot more detail into the Rive itself, the Rive file itself for this share link. And so you'll see that it's got that is pressed um, Boolean input that we have from our state machine, as well as some other playback options as far as like, do you want to automatically play the state machine when it lands? Um, and then you also have some fit and alignments um, options as well. So if you make this super wide or if you want to change the layout of the Rive um, artboard on the canvas, then you have some different options here as well. And this is all laid out in the documentation uh, in our help docs, by the way. If you want to understand more about you know what some of these values really mean, um, but most of the time we have we have uh, some pretty reasonable defaults here, so you don't usually need to mess with them. Um, cool. So I have this arrive on the page now. Imagine I want to toggle the switch by hovering a button on outside of this arrive canvas here. So I'm going to uh, create a button. Oh, I already had it. So yeah, uh, Framer has some really cool widgets uh, that you can search for and insert. 
makes it pretty nice to, to do a bunch of stuff here. Um, but I'm going to actually rename click to hover me. And then just adjust the layout. So again, uh, when I hover over the button, I want the switch to toggle on for the Rive. And then when I hover out of the button, um, it goes back into this off state. And so the way I kind of connect these two things is I'm going to actually group these two and make a component out of them. And so you'll see here in the Layers tab, I just selected both the, uh, the Rive component that I created, this switch state machine one, and this columns layer here that includes the button. I'll go ahead and right click and create component here. I'm going to call this grouped Rive component. And we enter this new stage here uh, with variants. And so a variant is kind of just like a, you can imagine it as like a state of, of this group. And so here um, you'll see I still have that switch state machine one with this is pressed set to no, which is the default. Um, but you'll also see I have the, the button here as well. And so I basically want to create a new variant where um, is pressed is yes or true in this case. And so I'm going to, uh, it has a handy way to create a new variant here. So I have variant two. And I'm going to set that state machine value is pressed to yes. And so this is like, hey, this is a new kind of variant of the group. And the way I make that connection of like, when I hover the button, go to variant two, is if I click on this, you'll notice this like little um, lightning icon. I can drag and drop this to, or sorry, I can drag this over to variant two. And you'll notice this interactions uh, piece here in the properties panel. Um, by default, it has an interaction of tapping going to variant two, but we want to do hover. So I'm going to add a transition. And so we have this little modal that comes up. Um, and in this on property, um, I have this tap, but I also have mouse enter and mouse leave, which is equivalent to like hovering on and hovering off the button. So I'm going to do mouse enter. So when it hovers over the button, I want to set the variant to go to variant two. Uh, so this kind of makes sense, right? So like when I mouse enter into this button, I'm going into variant two, and variant two has the state machine input is pressed set to yes. So if I play this, um, or actually let me play variant one. If I hover over the button, you'll see it goes into that variant two state where it changes that state machine. Again, it's it's changing it completely outside of the Rive canvas. So this is uh, really powerful stuff. You could imagine all kinds of UI elements being able to do this. Um, but now I want to connect it uh, in the opposite way. So when I hover off of the button, it goes back to variant one where is pressed is off or set to no. So I'm going to go to this variant two button and I'm going to connect it to variant one here. Um, and I'm going to set a new transition from mouse leave back to variant one. All right, now if I play this group again, I'm hovering into variant two and hovering off, I go back into variant one. So uh, if I go back now to my framer page that has this group, uh, those changes should already take, you don't need to do any uh, changes here because we already have that group derived component. So if I play this page, I've got my switch component for this design system page around hovering, uh, sorry, around switch components. So if I hover in, change the state machine, hovering off, going back. And so uh, this is a really uh, simple uh, kind of example showing just using a button, how you can uh, manipulate state machine inputs. Normally, again, you'd have to do this with runtime code to get this granular control. Um, but with Framer specifically, you can we can tap into their kind of framework and tooling to be able to have a bunch of different elements uh, be able to interact with Rive and, and control that interactive content. So um, yeah, I just wanted to show that off again. Um, 
uh, yeah, you can look at uh, our live stream a few a few live streams back where Guido shared this. Um, we also have a very dedicated page in our uh, help docs in, in the description box below um, showing step-by-step -step kind of how to do this, um, this specific example. Um, so you can follow along there as well if you'd like to see written content. But yeah, that's our deeper framer integration there. Um, and now I want to go into our 